So we've learned about why enolates are stable. We've learned about how to synthesize kinetic versus thermodynamic enolates. We've learned about enolate equivalents. Well, how the heck do these enolates react with electrophiles? And what I wanted to do is not just go straight to the enolate, straight to the enol. Let's start with things that we've known so far, right? Um, because really we want to learn about these things in the context of what we already know. So uh, what was the first thing we added electrophiles to? Uh, the first thing we added electrophiles to were pi bonds. This happened way back in chapter 10 of Organic Chemistry 1. Um, how do electrophiles add to pi bonds? Well, the pi bond has negative electrons in it. Those negative electrons are attracted to the partially positive electrophile or the fully positive electrophile. So that pi bond just adds to that. That adds to the less substituted position because the more substituted position is better for stabilizing that carbocation, right? Carbocation is stabilized by having two groups delocalizing their electrons onto it through hyperconjugation. Um, so, so that's how pi bonds react to just a standard alkene. Uh, how's that going to be different than our enol? Um, turns out it's not really going to be much different at all. If we have an enol, it's going to react the same way. We're going to add the electrophile to that pi bond. Um, that will add the electrophile to the terminal position, putting a, partial, uh, putting a positive charge there. And uh, which is more stable at this point? Uh, well, that positive charge is on that secondary position, but it's uh, just there by itself. There's no delocalization. And enol is going to be even a more stable uh, intermediate because of the delocalization um, because of that resonance, which is again showing that conjugation. Um, what about an enolate? Um, enolates, uh, remember we, we could redraw a resonance structure showing a negative charge on that carbon or we can put the negative charge on that oxygen. Turns out that there are ways to add the enolate to either the electrophile to either position. We always say negatives flow to positives. And um, it turns out that there are different factors um, where you can get either the oxygen's negative or the carbon's negative to react. But in the context of what we see in um, organic chemistry too, the most common thing that happens is that the electrophile is going to add to the carbon, not the oxygen. Um, so again, this reactivity follows the same trend that we've seen with alkenes, with enols, um, enolates, it's the same situation, where we're going to add the electrophile here, and essentially at this point, we already have a neutral species because we can just, again, draw that other more prevalent resonance structure showing that the CO pi bond exists, and we've added that electrophile to the carbon. Um, so uh, this is this shouldn't seem super new or super crazy. Uh, hopefully showing in the context of reactions we've learned before um, can demonstrate that to you. So um, more on this in one minute. Okay, so we've seen how the electrophiles are added to the pi bonds of an enolate or an enol. Um, so if we wanted to add an electrophile to this position, what would we put in these boxes to, uh, to make that occur? So take a minute. Pump the brakes, pause for a moment, write some stuff down, then come back. Okay, you did that, great. Um, so we might as well quantitatively form our enolate. So we'll just use our super strong base, um, lithium disopropylamine. Oops, it should be a isopropyl group. And that is going to, and these don't exist, salts don't exist by themselves, right? We need a solvent. This is a really strong base, so we need an aprotic solvent. Uh, these reactions are typically run in ethereal solvents, so diethyl ether or THF, um, those ethers that we've talked about in previous chapters. Um, we'll use THF. That one actually is used probably more often with this enolate chemistry, which is that cyclic ether, tetrahydrofuran. Um, when we mix those two with our ketone, we're going to quantitatively form our enolate by deprotonating this position here. So essentially, grabs that, we'll form our negative charge there. We know that it's not just there, but it's also on that oxygen right there. Uh, we would just have to show that resonance structure. What are we gonna do to add our electrophile to? We're just gonna add that electrophile to the solution. 
Um, so once we add two, we have this nucleophilic carbon that's going to add to that electrophile to produce the product. Um, in reality, um, this is usually run, you dry out your starting material because we, if we had a bunch of water with our base, it's just going to deprotonate the water. Um, then you would drip your lithium disprotyl amine solution into your solution of starting material. You actually can do either way. You could have a solution of lithium disprotyl amine um, in solvent and drip your starting material into that. And then at that point, uh, you often see a color change when your anion forms, when your enolate forms. Um, once that's complete, then you would drip your electrophile into that same solution. Those two would react. You'd give them time to react. Uh, you'd probably warm the solution up. Usually you form enolates at colder temperatures. Um, and then that would react with the electrophile. Um, and uh, you'd then work up the reaction. So, um, so that's how these reactions work. Um, and uh, enolate chemistry is a super powerful synthetic method. So um, yeah, we're going to talk more about it.